How's it going? Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. This is a Bitwig Studio tutorial. Um, it was originally just going to be show you how to do sort of side chain compression using the Dynamics plugin, but I've uh, found out a neat little, tr neat little trick today. Um, those of you who have come from Ableton to, Ableton to Bitwig know that in Ableton you can uh, there's a built-in EQ into the compressor that enables you to pinpoint the part of uh, the incoming audio that you want the side chain to react to. Now, I didn't think it was possible with the dynamics in Bitwig, but it is, so uh, anyway, we'll, we'll set up the dynamics first, or the compressor if you like, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So this is the source material, what we've got, this is a track that I made last week. So we've got uh, a nice pad that I made with Synthmaster, uh, I might do a tutorial on this. It's nothing special really, it's just a, a super sorry sort of pad, band past, uh, some modulation on the filter. So I'll bring the kick in as well. So this is trance music, that's calling out to be side chained. Uh, the way you do that in Bitwig is with the Dynamics plugin. So if we search for it, Dynamics, we drop it after the Synthmaster plugin. Now this little box here, this device input, this is where you you're going to select the kick. So you want the kick to trigger the compression, which is then going to reduce the volume of the Synthmaster pad. So you need to choose the kick, which is in my drums group. It's a Vengeance trance bass that I used, and you want it pre. You want it before any effects that you've got on the kick itself. So we've chosen the input now. All you need to do to set this going is increase the high ratio. Uh, a 1 over 1 is not going to have any effects. Um, for side chain compression on a pad like this, I normally just use a standard 1 over 2 or 2 over 1. You can hear that's having a desired pumping effect now straight away. You're going to want quite a snappy attack so it moves out of the way of the punch of the kick pretty instantaneously. I normally have it around a, th a third of a second or 0.3 milliseconds. Now if you look at this shape we've got going through here, <coughs> is picking up the click of the kick, which is this bit at the bottom. You can see that sharp little click. It's also picking up some other transients as well. It's not a really smooth curve, which you want from a side chain. Um, so it, it doesn't have a built-in EQ to enable you to pinpoint the part of the kick that you want. You have to drag an EQ in here. Now you can use the uh, stop bitwig EQ, or you can have, use any other EQs that you got. I'm gonna use Fab Filter Pro EQ two because it's the best EQ you can get and the way you do this is you don't just drag it before or after you have to drag it to this SC effects the sidechain effects slot so you drag it from your browser to the sidechain effects slot now what this EQ is now doing is this EQ this is EQ in the, the incoming source material that's going to trigger the compression like you can see it's in line with the bass drum kick this is the volume of the the incoming audio and this is the sidechain effect which is going to affect it so if I drag the peaks around, you're not going to hear it having any effect on the sound. All this is having an effect is on the, the incoming audio. So we'll do away with the uh, bass drum. I'll just show you again. This EQ isn't doing anything to the synth master. All this is doing is EQ in the incoming source material. So what you're going to want to do to get a classic side chain is you're going to you're going to want to create a low cut. You're going to want to get rid of the lows, anything below sort of 300, um, the sort of wump of the kick and the base of the kick. You don't want the compressor reacting to that part of the sound. You want it reacting to the punch of the kick. Straight away, you can see it's got a it's got rid of that initial sort of glitch that we had. pretty much done it on its own. I mean, if we solo the kick I've got here, main punch of a kick is normally about 1200 hertz I've found personally. So I mean, I just know that just from using this, these vengeance sort of kicks that I do. So if we then go back to Synthmaster, that sidechain effect has gone for some reason. 
for some reason we'll load it again we'll create that low cut you can see those little curves that I was on about the more low ends we cut out the smoother the input curve So now if we also boost the frequency around about 12, 1300 hertz, you're going to see it's going to have an effect on that curve as well. It's going to make it even smoother. We create a high cut as well. We've, we've pretty much created a band pass around the click of the kick to give us a a much more instant and a more focused input material to create the compression. You can see now what effect that's having. Smooth out the release, bring the release down, make it more punchy. So we'll bring the kick back in. If you decrease the threshold it's going to make it even more pronounced. just what you want to be aiming for you want to be aiming for that nice sort of shark fin if you like you don't want it to come to an exact point and then come straight back down you want it to level off at the top sort of halfway through the transient so that's the shape what you want to be looking for so yeah I mean just to show you we can do that if we delete this we can do the exact same principle but we can use the bitwig EQ5 drag it to the side chain effect slot create a high pass filter you going Janet see you later <clears throat> people's leaving sorry so yeah we've done the same thing 1200 hertz there you have it that's how to use an EQ as a sidechain effects to pinpoint where you want your dynamics compressor to sidechain from piece of cake uh, any questions feel free to ask subscribe at the top here as always thanks for watching